Moving on, SEC Auburn, 31, Ole Miss, 20. Let me give you the rundown here. Auburn won yardage, 483 to 463. They won yards per play, 6.3 to 5.7. They won drive points, so they, they were able to drive the ball more, 31 to 17 on that. They uh, owned rushing, which was a little more surprising than, than some would think, 207 to 156. Ole Miss won turnovers, 2 to 1, uh, but they had three fourth down failures, and that is just Kiffin's M.O. That's what he does. Analytically, he looks at it and goes for it. When they were down 31 to 20, and he chose to go for that fourth down instead of kicking the field goal to make it a one-possession game, I was a little shocked that he didn't... Analytically, it makes sense. Daniel jumps in, said War Eagle. Uh, Brad's Crazy Life said he's in Olive Branch, and he said War Eagle. Cheers to that. Ole Miss won third downs, 40 to 36. But I, I did notice when Matt Corral is not healthy, Ole Miss has almost no chance. Matt Corral is this team. Like, it's not just it's just not Matt Corral not being healthy though. They're missing like three offensive line starters. Yeah. That their receiving core is completely decimated right now. This and then defensively, the reason he has to go for it, Gary, is because it's not because the analytics say it or whatever. He knows his defense can't get stops. That's just it. Yeah. Yeah. I I still feel like I would have kicked that field goal. But that's hard for me. And then, and then you want to give a touchdown to drive. And okay, yeah. you kick the ball off. They're going to get the ball to 30, and then they're going to drive 70 yards and score another touchdown. That doesn't help you. It's still a hell of a... So, uh, so McKinnon, uh, who normally jumps in on the show, McKinnon actually texted me last night and, and was talking about this situation. And, and we discussed the fact that Kiffin just does not have the, the trench talent or the no. skill talent at Ole Miss. No. That's right. That... It, so he has to build everything around the quarterback. Sure. And and I don't, at, at some other jobs, uh, I don't think he would have that issue, right? It, well, no, so, no, it's going to be totally different. You, you, what Lane does is what Lane is good at is taking what he has and making the best out of it and, and building an offense around it, which is what makes him an exceptional offensive football coach. So many Ole Miss fans are, are killing DJ Durkin all the time because they can't get stopped. Where, where do they have talent on the defense to act? Like, there's no scheme that you can put together. I've got friends that hate the defense and hate the, you know, the the whatever it is, the three, two, six, or whatever they run. Like, they, there's no scheme that he can put out there. You know why he's running the three, two, six? Because he has six DBs that are better tacklers than he has offense, uh, defensive linemen or linebackers. Yeah. So, so if you take a DB out and replace it with a linebacker, okay, that's a more conventional defense. But if the guy you replaced and put on the field can't make a tackle, then it doesn't help you. Like, there's no scheming. They don't have defensive talent. They don't have depth there at all. And offensively, Matt Corral is a warrior god, and that's about it. Yes. Yes, you're 100% right. Auburn had seven tackles for loss. Ole Miss only I thought had four. Bo did some special like, things, by the way. Yeah. As soon, the, the very first drive, Bo had one of those. I ran 75 yards behind the line of scrimmage and finally made a play for like a nine-yard first down. And I thought, well, if it's going to be one of those nights, that's what he did to LSU. That's what he did to Arkansas. If he's able to do that, he ain't stopping them. Nope. You are 100% right about that. It's It, it, was, it was fascinating. It was fascinating to watch. I, it's a Is there a running back that you would rather have in the SEC or in the country right now with a two-score lead where you need to ice the ball game away than Tank Bixby? No. Because uh, he Bixby, doesn't go out of bounds. They tackled the football. He was holding the football. He was carrying the football. And a defensive guy jumps and wraps his arms around the ball and I was watching with an old Miss friend, my buddy Scott, and I just told Scott, I said, that boy better hold on because <laughs> he's going for a ride, and about six yards later, Bigsby finally fell down, and yeah. he just drugged that dude. Yes. Well, Bigsby is is fantastic. He has not been good for four or five weeks. Like, he hasn't – there was – I don't know if it was an injury or what. Uh, I was think, Hunter I think, had kind I of taken over. I think defensive schemes were, were just trying to shut him down because that's what you do. Ole Miss doesn't have the scheming to shut anybody down. He, he, he just had, with up two scores, Tank is a guy that I wouldn't mind having in the backfield to, to ice a game away. No, no, that guy's yeah, I think really hard to tackle. Right. He doesn't go out of bounds. And everybody who does tackle him doesn't want to tackle him the very next play. And True. so you just keep you just keep running at those guys. You just find a spot. It's like a DB, a quarterback that's picking on a DB. You just you just find a guy and you just say we're just running it left all night long for the rest of the game because these guys ain't going to want to tackle me. 
after three or four times of getting hit, they're just going to get out of the way. And it played out with the stats for sure. 23 attempts, yeah. uh, 140 yards, one touchdown. Bo Nix, uh, another you know great passing night, 22 out of 30, 276 yards, one touchdown. I thought before the season that it was going to take a long time to be able to develop Bo Nix into a good, competent quarterback, and and I was just wrong. What Brian Harson and Mike and Bobo? Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're five and two right now. Yeah, I mean that's it, it, this is a good football team. Like Auburn's I'm going to tell you this, man, they're going to beat Alabama at the end of the, the season. The game, the game, the game day option next week going to A and M wouldn't be a bad idea. I tend to agree. I don't think that they that's, have uh, that, announced yet. No, they um, haven't announced it, and everyone assumes that they're going to go because they want to showcase Cincinnati. And I love Cincinnati, and I want Cincinnati to get publicity. And I want th- there's not going to be a bigger game next weekend than Auburn going to A&M. That's an yeah. unbelievable game, and that's that, going to be a fantastic atmosphere. Yes, yes, I. You don't I have agree. two great. Te- they're not two great teams, but they're two really good teams. I think you're going to get a game a whole lot like you got Michigan, Michigan State, and nobody would be upset about that. I uh, I do believe that. Um... Let's see, the SEC, I was going to see if they announced. I think that's supposed to be the, uh, I think it will be the 230 game. That'll, that'll be Add, the 230 CBS game. I can't think of another SEC game that they'd want to put. It ain't going to be LSU or Alabama. Nah. That, that, that they'll end up putting on the SEC network. Well, it's, so they there's won't. a chance they that one's the 11 a.m. game, or Georgia-Missouri might be the 11 a.m. They're not going to put Alabama on an 11 a.m., Gary. Jesus. Well, it's, it's between them and Georgia. So They ain't putting, they ain't putting Alabama on an 11 a.m. Hey, you, you might be right about that, but yeah. Uh, Auburn, I, I do think, is going to beat Alabama at the end of the season. They they I, look I like a team do, that is, I kind of do too. Yeah, they're they're really good. Like this is we, a good. Football we're gonna team. have a weird. We're gonna have a weird round robin for Auburn, Texas A and M. Now, I guess Ole Miss got two losses in, in Alabama. If if those teams kind of all beat up on each other, we we might have a a weird you know two or three loss team make it make it to Atlanta from the West. Uh, if Auburn loses uh, to A and M, that gives them two losses in the SEC. A&M's already got two losses in the SEC. If Auburn beats Alabama, that's two losses, and then Ole Miss would have two losses. It Well, yeah. Ole Miss is going to end up with more because they have to play A&M, A&M. If, if A&M well, goes yeah, unfair. If they lose to A&M. Like we're gonna, it, it's going to play out, but it's... It's a lot of fun. You've got, some, you've got some good teams. Listen, last night, the second from the bottom team in the West, Mississippi State, played the second from the top team in the East, and they beat the hell out of them. Uh, yes. Yes, they did. I've, I've got that. Uh, We've said this for a long time. The West is always, it's the best, it's the best conference in all of football. It's the best division. Yeah, for sure. The division. Yeah. yeah best in division. All of football. Best division. Now, moving on, I've actually got that game uh, on here to talk about here in just a little bit. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.